Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, my mom and two of my siblings came over and we did a family movie night and I made some Halloween treats. Let me show you what I made. First, I made cupcakes using this Halloween Funfetti cake mix and icing. I just cooked it according to the package instructions. And I do apologize. I did not show everything that I made this day step by step. Um, I was super, super busy and I was trying to get everything done before they came over. So I do apologize about that. Next, I got this bag of Halloween shaped pasta. I think I got it at Aldi. I'm just going to cook this up according to the package instructions. And I made some macaroni and cheese. I added in two packets of the Velveeta sauce, a little bit of milk, and some pepper, and that was it for the mac and cheese. A couple weeks before this, my little sister had shared with me this YouTube video that she saw where someone made some mummy jalapeno poppers. They were super cute, and I knew I wanted to make them for this family movie night. I didn't follow a specific recipe. I'll try to find a recipe similar to what I did and link it in the description box below, but let me show you what I did. First, I took my jalapenos. These have been washed. I sliced them in half, removed the seeds and the membranes. I lined a cookie sheet with some aluminum foil, sprayed it with a little bit of cooking spray. I laid the jalapeno slices out, and then I sprinkled them with a little bit of salt and pepper. I like to bake my peppers a little bit ahead of time just so they get nice and soft, but you don't have to do that. You can skip it. I baked these at 300 and 75 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once I remove them from the oven, if you pre-bake them, you'll notice that there's a little bit of liquid from the peppers in there. So I just poured that out and then I allowed them to cool for maybe five to 10 minutes, just cool slightly so that, you know, I could handle them. Now for the mixture to go inside of the peppers, I have some cream cheese. Normally I just use softened cream cheese, but today I'm using this whipped cream cheese. To this, I'm adding some chili powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper and then sometimes when i make jalapeno poppers i make bacon wrapped but because we're going to wrap these in crescent rolls i'm going to add some of these bacon uh, pieces to it then i'm going to add some shredded cheddar cheese and mix it until it's well combined and then that's it that'll be our mixture at this point, I tasted the mixture and it was good, but I wanted to add a little bit of this dry ranch dressing mix. I thought it would be good and it was, it was super yummy. So I just sprinkled a little bit of that in and stirred it in and then I will fill my peppers. I filled the peppers and then I took a roll of crescent rolls. I laid them out and then I just cut them into thin little strips. I wrapped them around the jalapeno peppers to look like, you know, little mummies. And then I put them into the oven and I baked them for another 10 to 12 minutes until the crescent rolls were cooked all the way through. As soon as they came out of the oven, I took some of the little candy eyeballs and placed them into the mummies and that was it. And look at these, aren't these so cute? And they were delicious. They were so good. And here's the finished macaroni and cheese. I also made some potato salad. I've shared how I make this before on my channel. I'll have that video in the description box below. And to make it a little bit spooky, I took a plastic spider decoration. I washed it and dried it and I just added that to the potato salad. Next up, I made jack-o'-lantern cheeseburgers. I shared this last year on my channel. These are so, so easy and they're super cute. All you do is take cooked hamburgers. I used frozen patties today um, to make it easy and I cooked them on my George Foreman grill. You can, of course, pat out your own patties and cook them however you want. But once you have your cooked hamburger patties, I take a slice of American cheese. I take a paring knife and just cut out a little jack-o'-lantern face and add the cheese to my cooked hamburger patties. And that's it. Super easy, super cute. And here's everything finished. So we have the mummy jalapeno poppers, the macaroni and cheese, the cheeseburgers, the potato salad. And then I had some of the leftover bat and ghost chips that I got at Trader Joe's. So I served that up. And then here are the buns and the toppings. Here are those Funfetti cupcakes. And then I made this Halloween punch. I shared this in my Hocus Pocus video. I'll have that linked in the description box below. Everything was delicious. 
The next night was Halloween. I've seen these bloody finger hot dogs before on Pinterest, and so that's what I made for us for dinner. I just took some hot dogs, took a paring knife. I cut into the hot dogs to make like little fingernails and knuckles. I boiled these on the stove and then added them to the hot dog bun with a little bit of ketchup. And I served up some of the leftover potato salad and macaroni and cheese from the night before. And this was our dinner this night. Super cute and spooky. We had a really great Halloween. And I hope that if you and your family celebrate Halloween, that you had a safe and happy one. For dinner this night, I made what I call Southwest tilapia. I believe I've shared this before on my channel. I'm going to get started with the side dish. I'm making some Mexican sweet potatoes. I have some sweet potatoes that I've washed and peeled. I'm cutting them into chunks. I'm going to add this to a bowl. I'm adding some oil. I'm using some avocado oil, but you could just use olive oil or canola oil, whatever you have on hand. For my seasonings, I'm adding some ground cumin, smoked paprika, then I'm going to add garlic powder, chipotle chili powder, salt, pepper, some lime juice. I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. Lay these out on a cookie sheet in a single layer. And then I like to bake these at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are tender. For the entree, like I said, I'm making Southwest tilapia. Logan's Roadhouse used to have a dish, I believe they called it Santa Fe tilapia, and it was my favorite thing, but they took it off the menu, so I've done my best to recreate it. To get started, I'm making like the black bean salsa. Here I have some black beans that I've drained and rinsed. I'm adding them to a bowl. I'm taking some roasted red peppers. I'm going to chop those up. Then I'm going to add my corn. I just have a can of corn that I drained really well, placed it in this skillet, and just toasted it up. So to that, I'm adding some lime juice, some salt and pepper, and then that's it. I'm just going to give that a stir and set that aside until I'm ready for it. Now for the tilapia, I have some frozen tilapia that I've thawed. I have my cookie sheet that I've sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray. I'm going to lay the tilapia out. And as far as seasonings go, you can season this however you want. I like to add some Cajun seasoning. And while I was grabbing the Cajun seasoning, I saw this essence of emerald. So I'm just going to use that as well and then add a little bit of salt and pepper and some lime juice. And that's it. I'm going to place this into the oven. It's already set at 375 for the sweet potatoes. And I cooked it for about 12 to 15 minutes or until the uh, fish flaked with a fork. Here's the finished sweet potatoes, and then here is the tilapia. And then we've got the ranch dressing and the black bean salsa, and next I'll show you how I assemble it. Here are the plates. So I laid down the tilapia, added some of the corn and black bean salsa, some tortilla strips, and the ranch dressing. I forgot to mention this with the ranch. I apologize, but I doctor mine up a little bit. I add some lime juice, cilantro flakes, some chipotle chili powder, and give that a stir, and that's it for the ranch. And then we have the sweet potatoes. This was a super yummy dinner. For dinner the next night, I made baked chicken. I'm going to start out with one of the side dishes. I tried a new recipe for a cracked out pea salad. This is from the plain chicken. I'll have it linked in the description box below. This was really good. I would definitely make this again. So to get started, I have some elbow macaroni noodles that I'm just cooking up according to the package instructions. In this bowl, I'm going to add in the mayonnaise. Then I'm going to add the ranch dressing. You can, of course, use bottled. Nothing wrong with that. I like to make homemade ranch, though. I just feel like it tastes so much better than the bottled, and it's super easy. All it is is just mayonnaise, milk, and some dry ranch dressing mix. I'm going to stir that together and then add in my frozen thawed peas, the crumbled bacon, the shredded cheddar cheese, then some pepper, and I'm going to stir that until it's mixed together really well. And once the noodles were done, I drained them really well and rinsed them with some cold water. I'm going to add my noodles and then stir that. And then I'm going to add in my chopped green onions. Just to make it easy, I just took some scissors and cut them over the bowl. I'm going to stir that together one last time and then that's it. I'm going to cover this and place this into the refrigerator while I'm getting the rest of dinner ready. Now, when I make what I call baked chicken, I always do it the same way, and I based it off of a recipe that I found years ago on all recipes. I'll have the original recipe linked in the description box below, but I don't follow it exactly. In my freezer, I had a bag of two chicken thighs and two drumsticks, so I wanted to use that up. So in this casserole dish, I'm going to season both sides of the chicken. You can use whatever seasonings you'd like. I'm using some salt, pepper, garlic powder, 
onion powder, paprika, and some thyme leaves. And then that's it. Like I said, I'm just seasoning both sides. And then I'm going to place this into a preheated oven. It's set at 375 degrees. And you just want to cook this until the chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. For this, it took about 40 minutes. For my other side, I'm making some sweet carrots. In this pot, I'm adding some sliced carrots that I've drained. Next, I'm going to add some salt and pepper and then butter. I'm adding just maybe a tablespoon or so. And then just sweeten this up. Sometimes I use honey, sometimes I use brown sugar. It just depends on what I reach for and grab that day. I'm adding just a couple teaspoons of brown sugar and then that's it. I'm going to turn this on low and allow it to cook while the chicken is cooking. I have a can of these cornbread crescent rolls in my refrigerator and I've been wanting to give these a try. I've heard lots of good things about these. I'm just cooking these according to the package instructions which say to place them into a muffin tin and bake them in the oven. So that's what I'm doing. Here's the finished chicken. Here are those cornbread swirls. And then we have the carrots and the cracked out pea salad. And next I'll show you our plates. All right, and here's the plate. So we have the chicken, the carrots, the pea salad, and those cornbread swirls. Once they came out of the oven, I added just a little bit of butter on top. This was such, such a yummy dinner. That chicken is so flavorful, and I love dark meat because it stays so juicy. This was super yummy. I had a ham steak in the freezer that I wanted to use up. I bought it on Markdown at Food Lion a couple months ago. I asked my mom how they cook their ham steaks and she said she likes to warm it up in a skillet over the stove. So I decided to do that. In this skillet, I've added just a tablespoon of butter and I've got it on about medium heat. Once that butter's melted and the skillet is warm, I'm adding in that ham steak. And I cooked it just for about two minutes on each side. And here you can see me flipping it over. After I cooked it for the other two minutes on that second side, I'm going to remove it to a plate. And then in this skillet, I'm making just a little bit of a quick glaze. This is how I make my regular hams when I bake them in the oven. I left the juices from the steak in the skillet. I added a little bit of Dijon mustard, then some brown sugar. I'm going to stir that until the sugar is uh, melted. And then I'm just adding the ham steak back in. I'm going to cook it on each side for another two or three minutes. And then that's it. The ham steak will be ready. This was super, super quick. And that ham steak was delicious. Here's the ham, and then for the two side dishes tonight, I'll be sharing with you how I made these in an upcoming video for Thanksgiving size that will be out, I believe, next week. First is this pineapple casserole. It may sound a little bit weird, especially if you've never had it before, but it's delicious, especially with ham. And then I made roasted butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. Here are the plates. So we have the ham, the pineapple casserole, the roasted vegetables, and then we had some of the leftover cornbread swirls from the night before. I just warmed those up. This was delicious. This was such a good dinner. For dinner the next night, we veered off the meal plan. We did Greek takeout. On this particular night, we did some family pictures with my husband and I and Mr. Happy, and we did them at a park outside of Nashville, and it was gorgeous, and we did it right before sunset, and I mean, the park was just amazing, especially with all the fall colors, but by the time we got the pictures done and then traffic absolutely sucked on the way home, I was just not in the mood to get home and cook, so on our way, my husband ordered some takeout from our local Greek restaurant. We just picked it up, and that's what we had for dinner, so we did their year and chicken platter so we got the rice and then the salad and pita bread and we also got a side of hummus this was delicious and the portions that they give are so big we had enough for lunch the next day but that was dinner this night for dinner the next night, I actually made two different things, which I know might sound a little excessive for just the two of us, but let me explain. So I have been wanting chicken and gnocchi. This recipe is from Kat. I will have her channel linked in the description box below. This is so easy and it's super delicious. It's basically chicken and dumplings, but instead of dumplings, you use gnocchi. So I've been craving that and I had some chicken thighs in my refrigerator that I wanted to use up, but my husband had asked for Korean flank steak and sesame noodles and I'd already thought the flank steak so um you know i needed to use both of them up and i don't love the korean flank steak i mean it's okay but i don't love it so i went ahead and made both and that way we could just have lunch um for the next day which would have been sunday so i didn't have to make anything so i went ahead and made both things i've shared how i make the chicken and gnocchi before on my channel so like i said i'll have my video and cats listed in the description box below i've also shown before how i make this korean flank steak so that'll be linked in the description box below this this was such a yummy dinner, and like I said, we had plenty of leftovers for lunch the next day. 
And that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you like this video and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.